Hey, welcome to another episode of SOS VHS. Today I'm coming back to the island to interview two of my favorite people who I just met. <laughs> Taylor Williamson and uh, Joey Bragg. Oh, that's I close. No, close enough? Yeah, close he has enough. an accent. The accent allows me to, you know, kind of like... <laughs> Smart. <laughs> and we're watching your favorite or discussing your favorite movie Eraser yeah. in 1996 Arnold Schwarzenegger it's our favorite movie together yes I honestly I watched the movie okay we're done holding hands no, watched done. both yeah. of you I was trying to get you know usually I try to draw parallelisms between the the movies and your lives and I couldn't find anything <laughs> Wait, come on it's like, one, the muscles so Arnold yeah Arnold <laughs> is like you know first of everything and you guys i mean you're kind of like Careful. semi-finalists and Careful. finalists and things but careful oh okay runner up yeah yeah, yeah. runner up runner up I mean, he's top 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 yeah. right he's like the mo the mr he, mr, mr. mr. Atlas. universe mr. Yeah. atlas and, you know he goes into acting top blockbuster goes into politics governor and then it's like you guys are <laughs> careful. you very similar yeah Do you no, see, but i, I, I so can, what, what can yeah. i just I, I, before you I, I ask your question, <laughs> do you see who you're talking trash to? <laughs> yeah. See, this is his muscle. I'm sorry, yeah. Okay. And like my rat <laughs> badass outfit, and I have a right. cop on my lap. Like, no. do you want to be careful with your words? True. Okay, so let me let me rephrase. I'm what? sure there's a translation <laughs> issue, and that's why you're being so aggressive. Let's, <laughs> let's fix this. Hey, it's... real quick, turn off your body cam, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> now say whatever you want to say. <laughs> All right. Yes. He's... <laughs> Kind of fall in sleep. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't do much more than sleep. I guess like, the question I have is why? Why this movie? Why? Why does this movie speak to both of you? I just I'm gonna take I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this movie is like the epitome of the 80s 90s nonsense action where it's just like put a hot guy and a hot lady in some scenario have an actor like james khan or it's always somebody that like is respected outside of this movie uh, right and just do a bunch of nonsense grab big guns and uh i think it was i said it out loud it's like i love this movie and then you <laughs> just went ham and you were like yes yes well can i tell you it's the first movie i ever saw r-rated movie i saw in a movie theater really i drove oh. from san diego to the uh formerly known as man's chinese theater i think still is it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> formerly and currently now it's them's chinese yesterday theater. Uh, nice yeah. nice uh, uh, 2024 uh. um uh, <laughs> i think betty just died um <laughs> yep <laughs> rest in peace um but uh, so that was a big deal i drove from san diego to go see that in la and uh and like I bought it, I own it on DVD. Remember, like back when you had DVDs, you just like had like. I mean, this is the first big studio movie released on DVD. Is that true? Is it really? Yeah, this is 1996. You basically are born. I was the same born in year, right? Like, yeah. I thought maybe that's a connection there. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> I came out that when, as soon as uh, Arnold grabs those two plasma guns in the end, my yeah. mom saw that and she goes, "Ah!" and I popped out. That would. That's what. Yeah. That's a good yeah, story. Yeah, it's the coolest thing she'd ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. seen. Joey makes me feel 900 years old because like... Uh, that you were I, driving and I was like being born? Yeah, I... Yeah. It's crazy. I had... Uh, Wild! I had... How dare you? Um, <laughs> uh, when... Uh, like Nick Swartzen had to stand a bit about like what oldies are going to be like when we're old. It's going to be like... like Fuck the police and whatever, you know, like right. Um, but that's what that's what that like, it is. Erase it for him is like, oh, that's an olden movie. <laughs> it right. is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I yeah, I, I, I was in high school when I when I saw it, and and it was one of those things. I mean, you know, this the director uh, Chuck, uh, Russell. Chuck Russell did the previous Chuck, movie. Chuck, Chuck, I call him Charles. You call him Chuck. You're on, you're friendly with him. Chuck Russell, yeah, Chuck. my friend Chuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he did the mask. Two years before the, his previous movie was The Mask. Oh, it was huh. like a what a huge, departure! Huge uh, international success. I mean, Eraser was number one at the box office too. Really? Yeah. So huh. it's, uh, I watched the, that movie and it just it feels like if that movie came out today, it would be straight to Netflix to no avail. Uh -huh. Yes. You know? Eraser. Eraser. Don't you think? I'm trying to have a career, Mr. Russell, Mr. Schwarzenegger. I <laughs> Mr. loved it. Russell. I thought it was so good. And uh, <laughs> yeah, was, it's art. And uh, Miss Williams, I love your singing and your, your beautiful face. Your videotapes you've made with basketball players that are on the internet. And um, mm -hmm. 
She had some controversy. She had a videotape with like a sex tape? Am I making this up? Did she not have a... I think that goes beyond my... The, the type of movies I usually love. I gotta... Well, to be honest... When let's we... do this. Let's have that be our VHS. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what Vanessa Williams' sex tape she has one for real? Can we change the movie that we're... Yeah, uh, yeah that we're talking about? Wasn't that... She was like Miss the Universe or something? Yeah, she's gorgeous. And then she had like I, I she had a, an adult film tape. I might be making this up. It's possible I'm lying completely, but John, can you, you please? You seem like the kind of guy that would know. Thank you. She was Miss America, but I don't see anything about a sex tape. Well, did she have a naked pictures or something? Something? Yeah. Can, is there any way we can see her vagina or nipples <laughs> can you, or butt? Can you show her? Let me thing? Google it real quick. That's yeah. She's classy. I'm I see your your train of thought how it goes from I, how I know I, there's I, a sex tape, dude. I believe there was an adult. <laughs> Do you know probably what happened? <laughs> it probably was out there, and then it got erased. Oh, yeah. you've so been erased. Been erased. Isn't it wild? Like erased. <laughs> the casting in this movie, everyone looks. You know how like news she's news anchors like that guy looks like a news anchor. Mm -hmm. The casting in this is so good and so bad at the same time. Like that guy, that guy's a bad guy. Just look at his face; he's a bad guy. I, and that guy's a cop; he's a cop. And like everyone looks like. I think. I mean, Joey's right. Is the is the prototype of that type of yeah, movie. The, the yeah. diehards and the it's, you know the, the terminators they also the mdp and so it's like the, oh, that, yeah. that's sort of like yeah they also do so many of the cliche things that arnold schwarzenegger made cliche like the yeah. opening credits is like tying boots which he like did in commando for, i'm pretty sure he like invented well, that right? it's, it's a little bit of like the rumble which yeah. Uh, yeah. sylvester stallone did but yeah it's like oh, simi yeah. similar similar idea of like those Typical action movie. I watched it with my uh, Gen Z girlfriend, uh -huh. and he's hanging from the helicopter, and she goes, boy, what is Sylvester Stallone going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> they're not the same person. You realize that, right? <laughs> right. Two buff, funny-talking, weird guys, they're not the same person. Right. They have, I mean, they have a great history of rivalry and all of that, but I think Arnold had great luck to be always in movies that made it into, like, the pop culture. Yeah. Way more than, than Sylvester did, but, yeah. I mean, I guess... No, they both, they but, both did okay. But also, I will say, uh, Sylvester, which is also like his name is Sylvester. He's like the toughest guy in the world. His name is Sylvester. That's, right. a, that's a cat. Yes. The, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he has Oscars. He's got Oscars for his screenwriting. Right. That's yeah. that's that's something you can hold over. And then Arnold Schwarzenegger, governor of California. That's even that's, cooler. Yeah. Would you rather be the governor of California than have an Academy Award? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Do you know what I would do as my first act <laughs> as governor? Oh, boy. Give me three Academy Awards. Wow! Yeah, dude, executive order. Inception. <laughs> yeah, John, do you have do you have an update on the? <laughs> so she had uh, she posed nude for a penthouse, and they leaked them while she was Miss America, and then she had to resign as uh, Miss America. Oh, oh that's no, not a movie. That's sad. Uh, that's SOS uh, picture, right? <laughs> like <laughs> SOS J J P E G SOS uh, um, uh, PDF. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are those pictures? The Polaroid. Polaroid. Thank you. Yeah. Can we cut out the confusion? <laughs> I have an accent also. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's called a, a speech impediment. Um, and uh, uh, but I like to erase her. <laughs> Can yeah, we start over? Great energy, yeah. dude. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, well, are you guys action Hell fans? Yeah. It's my favorite genre. I, I love I owned Eraser already on... Uh, DVD, so I was able to just pop that bad boy in. I went through a period, I think it was uh, during the beginning of COVID, and I just watched like every single what the you know what the what the people will say are bad action movies from the 80s or 90s but they've yeah. got a sort of je ne sais quoi about them that makes you just kind of it's like addictive well before the 80s they were not action movies like that that's the the, the kind of like the stamp that said oh this is an action movie where they are no in the sylvester type of movies oh huh. you know, they, they they invented the genre yeah because there's so many like cobra cliffhanger right so many what executive decisions so many ones that you did not withstand the test of time yeah like those movies aren't coming on hbo or showtime those movies are just you either look for them because you know they exist or you never see them ever yeah that's fun and then you have the people like them like the steven seagulls and the yeah club and dance and all of the kind of like b and c listers that doing this that same movie Don't put jean claude into that sir <laughs> yeah Why? but i <sighs> Have you seen Universal Soldier? Yeah, I've That's seen them all. I I, I grew up loving those movies. I love too. them, dude. They're so <laughs> the fun. greatest line. What I love about the erase eraser uh, is the reaching for catchphrases. Yeah, like they're <laughs> like one of these is gonna stick. You know, like yeah. They also but, try to go. Sorry, I didn't want to step on you. No, but like, but like, 
like Jean Claude, the, the one of the most iconic with the unions. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really tried with that one. But like, but like, um, um, in my life, the most iconic catchphrase is "Universal Soldier." Spoiler alert! At the kind of say he kills somebody, you know, mm -hmm. and the guy goes to punch uh, Jean Claude Van Damme's character, and he goes, "Say goodbye, asshole," and he catches it. Do you know what he says next? Well, no. Do you know what he says next? Uh. -uh. Do it to me. Go to punch, go to punch me. Say goodbye, asshole. Goodbye, asshole. Uh, <laughs> Isn't mean, that also kind of the end of Eraser? No, but right, but the Eraser is like, but, ha, yes. So Erasers say goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, exactly. But they got like the, the he kills the alligator and he's like, your luggage. Your <laughs> <laughs> there was like twelve of those. Like there was a, I think that they, always that he has his own writing team, yeah. right? And like and going and doing like I mean he had John Milius uh uh do a pass on this script because really? they were friends yeah. from the, the content huh. and all of those you know, so he got like really big heavy hitters doing like passes for him. It's because some of them felt like bastardized bastardized versions of his old catchphrase. He of goes course. James Khan's like, God damn it, we're we're gonna get you and instead of being like, I'll be back, he's like I'll be right out. Right. <laughs> okay. Too close. Too close. Try and figure something well, out. Because he, he you can expect me in a moment. I mean, that, that's far enough. Movies that are like just two, three years apart. So yeah. He, but in Terminator defense, and yeah, Eraser? Terminator Two. Oh, huh? really? Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah, it's all the same same time. Well, because my my cousin is like obsessed with all these action movies, and he had a kid, and like obviously it's his it's the, all these movies are not appropriate for a little boy to watch, but. Anymore. This, I mean, was, oh, <laughs> yeah. By the way, that's a whole. Th uh, well, let me say this. Really so, like, but this kid knows all of Arnold's catchphrases because his mm. dad just tells him the stories. <laughs> like, then this happens. So the kid will be like, get to the job, but he doesn't know who Arnold is. He doesn't know anything about whatever. But, like, that's the wild thing about, like, being in the 90s. This is what you missed out on, buddy. <laughs> I was three. <laughs> all parents cared about, or, I mean, America, I'm curious, I imagine it's the same. We were just like, I was playing with Terminator toys as a kid and Swamp Thing and like all these like R-rated movies, toys, or uh, Rambo. I mean, the video games we played. And it, it was on Nintendo, so it was a video game. I'm just like, yeah, play, I'm playing all these video games based on R-rated uh, adult movies. And um, they were just boy things. Right. Also, yeah. at, the same, at the same time, we have these big action movies, the, all the sex thrillers of the 90s are coming, the yeah. you know, um, Fatal Attraction and... Yeah. and was the uh, big one with Sharon Stone? I'm uh, uh, right. Oh, this one, Basic, uh, Basic Instinct. Instinct. All of those movies that so is the, the same vagina one. I know that one. Basic Instinct. I was just testing you. Gotcha. Yeah. But I'm saying like I went to the movies to see those. You know, I was like 14 and really 15 and and. and then there was like a little bit of like a puritanical kind of like oh let's erase all of this stuff and uh, yeah. I think but because. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I think it was a little more. There was a little more freedom in in terms of like you going to watch this type of thing. It was a movie. There was no. Uh, there's always that group of people that would say, "Oh, this movie is making people violent," or "These video games are making people yeah. violent." But I think the general consensus was like it's just entertainment, and I would rather have my kid watching movies or playing video games than being on the streets doing. Right. Things. Yeah. I mean, We're also from Belgium, though. It's a different life out there, you know. I'm from Spain. But it's close enough. You're from Spain <laughs> and Belgium. And Belgium. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at you. My French is a little uh, not as good. Look at you. But I can do it. But like, I went to France when I was with my mom when I was Also like, a different country. You're from... <laughs> yeah. You know, how many? Belgium, France, <laughs> Spain, all three different countries. Yeah. How many countries are you from, buddy? It's like, you know, Europe. <laughs> You're from all of them? <laughs> yeah. He's wow. vague. It's why his accent's just a vague exactly. European accent. And like those guys plain European, guy. and you st <laughs> and you stuck with Europe. You didn't do the whole. I remember they got divorced from England. Yeah, we keep the English speakers out. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, mucho gusto. <laughs> oh, gracias. Oh, you speak Spanish. <laughs> you speak Spanish. Wow, Spanish. you've been Gracias. to Mexico. I've, yeah, also wow. it's different country. Spanish. Wow, um, a vaya con Dios. Mm -hmm. Viva, la, viva la raza. Viva la revolución. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, let's start. Si sí se puede. Si hey, se puede. Hey, we're going to we're gonna lose half our audience. <laughs> Indeed. Let's... But I want to say, okay. but, but yeah. you were in 14 going to see these like uh, filthy R rated uh, women, like, or, like women. movies for like women who want sexy stuff, right? Right. And, I don't uh, think it's for women that want sexy stuff, dude. No woman is going to watch a racer. I don't know. You're probably right. But in my kid brain, I never wanted to watch. 
I wanted to watch the boy. I was always in. I'm from America, '90s boy. I was like boys, boy things. I can't. It's a girl thing. Like in McDonald's, I they had basic things. It's a very man thing. I understand. Uh, there's, I, there's no girl want to watch. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, but to me, it's like maybe because like if my dad's girlfriend watched this stuff. It, I just correlate it with like like those okay. like novel. What do you call it? like those the books? The, the, the woman. They've been romance. Rom- the romance books, novels, and yeah. But it was smut. Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad's girlfriend was reading pornography. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I one time, this is a non sequitur, we'll get back to it, I promise. I was sitting next to my, my mom used to go and read next to each other in bed, like before bed, and even when I was like older. And if I would ever talk or something, she would go, shut up, shut up. And then she would read out loud the bit of her book to like get herself back on track. And one time I was like reading Magic Treehouse or something. And I was like, oh, these kids are up to shenanigans. And I was like, I'm reading, shut up. He slipped his rock hard penis into... And she was reading <laughs> pornography. Next oh, this week. is real. This is real. Yeah. Oh. That was crazy. I couldn't believe it. And I was a little kid. I was like, he did it. His penis gets rock hard. I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> Should we call Child Protective Service? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, th- those fine. are for women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are for women. <laughs> uh, okay, now back to you. <laughs> but so I went, to, uh, but I, I went to France when I was like 12 or 13. And like, of course, I'm on vacation with my family and we're in a different country. So it was very important to me to go to Planet Hollywood. <laughs> and also to go see Wild Wild West in the movie theater. Uh-huh. I got to get the cultural experience of France, you know? And uh, I was sitting next to my mom and we were watching Wild Wild West. So the trailer came out for Eyes Wide Shut and they showed the boobies in the trailer. In yeah. France? In France. Like, no, they showed well, the, the, the trailer is just the scene with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman in the mirror. And That's like, the best well, scene. Well, no, 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 And the, oh, right, like... Going? <laughs> I can't do this on, but <laughs> do it so he can. He doesn't know this show. <laughs> Stanley Hubrick, what? Okay, it, it's, it's special. It's a special memory of mine. It means a lot to me. Okay, well, I'll try. Mm. You're the bad bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> the bad bad thing. Something like that. You have the rights to that music. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I, think, I don't. I don't think. I think, that, I think it'll be fine. I don't, I don't think, think that will we'll catch it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I think if the writers of that song heard him do that, they'd be like, I don't even recognize that as the same song. <laughs> they should, they're going to be paying you. Actually. But, but but it's true. I, I remember the trailer vividly because it was that. But I remember, like, I because yeah. I was always the boy. Like, my mom's an artist, and she doesn't care about that stuff. I was always one, like, oh my god, I'm next to my mom, and there's boobs, and she's seeing boobs, right. like she's never seen them before, which I believe and hope. And um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even think. I gotta. Move. I I just blacked out. I have yeah, to <laughs> picturing uh, Stop it. Kidman I boobies. Can't, I can't. My mom's my mom's never seen boobs. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, but like, could you be 14 in 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 Spain and go see like an R-rated movie? They no, there are ratings too. I just think when I was in high school that like they weren't enforcing them. Like I, I never had issues passing the, yeah, you know, getting a ticket or going in. And also, if you go with in my case with my parents or anything like that, I was totally allowed to do that. Also, these kids are showing up eight years old smoking a cigarette. Going, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, hey, I would like a ticket to a racer. The person's not gonna be like, that's too old for you. They're be like, oh, you want a little shot of cognac while you go watch it? Go for it, buddy. <laughs> You're just drinking wine and walking yeah. in. Mm. We're gonna re- revolutionize in, a, in another couple of years, so we're, have, a, have a gun. I but know. I think like the rating there is a little more strict with violence and less with sex and here it goes the other way. That's oh, true, yeah. Because uh, kids here, it's like th- these PG movies, like these, but not Marvel movies, but we can watch bloody violence and then can't say ass, can't right. show sex. It's all insane, especially like, I mean, the the ratings don't, from my understanding i don't believe that they go back and change ratings to match current times they don't have you seen like weird science yeah yeah it's the gay f word is in it maybe 15 times oh yeah yeah pg And like, also these movies have like nudity sometimes. Like it's just yeah. like, <laughs> they were just like, yeah, you're seven year old. Yeah, it's this. difficult to judge it by today's like, you know, yeah. uh, political and social. And that's why America has mass shootings and not mass orgies because <laughs> we're seeing a lot of violence. Oh, and that and the act. fact that you can buy guns. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's, <laughs> right. yeah. that's another reason. Okay, another foreigner come to our country <laughs> telling us what's right. wrong with us. No, I'm, I'm all, you know, I love the guns too, but I love it. Don't see it too. Yeah. 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 Hey, oh, I get it because we're too alpha. You're, you're too alpha. Yeah, we love guns. Yeah, yeah dude. You what's love your, guns. What's your favorite gun? Probably the Walther PPK. You know my favorite gun? What? That one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, arm one no, no, that and arm one. two. Well, I don't want that. No, I don't like that but one. How, I how, hate that one. How did you guys. That's an ugly ass. I like this no, one. No, this is lumpy. Did one. you guys meet the, you know, um, how did you. This 
friendship and collaboration started is because of m movies like Eraser. Axe throwing. I, I was at the movie theater <laughs> in 1996 seeing right. Eraser, and then I found out that someone I dated nine months ago just had a baby. <laughs> uh -huh. And I was like, this is weird, you know? Like and there are New Year's babies, there's also Eraser babies. <laughs> ah. I was the first Eraser baby in America. <laughs> I don't think he understands that. I'm, I'm announcing he's my son. I don't think he understands that. I don't I think the audi our audience knows, Papa. Um, our audience knows. You're my papa. You know, can I tell you my I'm problem baby with boy. It? Yeah. Is I do a silly bit, and then he yes ands it to the point that makes me really uncomfortable. Yeah, okay. You know what my problem with him? He loves is it. As soon as somebody plays along with his bit, it makes him uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he's, only he's allowed you to do a bit. You take <laughs> um, But... Yeah, nice to see you, son. Nice to see you too, Papa. No, but for but for real, how did you? Because <laughs> yeah. you guys are not in the same uh, right generation. No, I'm a few years older than. But I met him when he was a teenage comedy sensation. For real. Yeah, he was trying to groom me, but instead we just became friends. Okay, but he was really cool about it. Like you know, like you, you ever like hit on somebody and then like they're like they're like I don't see a relationship here. I don't see, I don't feel a yeah. spark, but we can be buddies. You know, like you just get yeah. friend zone, and then you're like it's... our first date was to the bowling alley, and I was like I don't see anything romantic here, but like bowling was really fun. Mm. And so we went axe throwing, and then we went archery shooting, a bunch of alpha He never stuff. took you to, to Neverland. He tried. He <laughs> tried. But it was right after uh, Michael Jackson dies, there was a lot of press. Got it. That's the other thing that happens in cinema in this business is uh, Michael Jackson. Remember, do you, did you ever go to uh, LA Disneyland or Amer Orange County Disneyland? There's other Disneylands around the world. You know, There was Orange what County Disneyland? Disneyland? Anaheim. Disneyland. Anaheim. Yeah. yeah. The, the, real, no, the regular the Disneyland. Only Disneyland. I'm, Nobody call, yeah, I'm speaking as Disney. someone who's been to Europe. I've been to Paris. The other ones are called something else. Yeah, exactly. They're called the, Tokyo. The only Paris Disneyland is the one in California. What's the one in Paris called? Paris. Disneyland Disney. Paris. Oh. <laughs> You were trying to sound so like well traveled just now. <laughs> guys, Orange County Disneyland. Has anybody been to Orange County? The other one is Disney World. In the, yeah, and <laughs> because you're undermining me in front of my child. <laughs> Has she been to like, Disneyland? Okay, the the original. So, but anyways, they had the Captain EO uh, ride or experience. You know what I'm talking about? Have you watched John Landis directed this thing? And it's like, the submarine one? No, it's this epic 3D movie that you go watch of uh, Michael Jackson. It's like a- Plus, Yeah, oh. it was there like in the 80s. Well, can I tell you, it was there in the 80s and the 90s. Then they took it away after he was uh, found guilty or accused like 400 times. They're like, you know what? This is the time we're going to take this away. And they put in Honey, We Shrunk the Audience. And then guess what they put back after he died? Jared from Subway. <laughs> <laughs> the Jared from Subway experience. I might be half lying. Like the, it might be Disney World that did this. But one of them, they put the Captain Uride back in. Like, well, he's dead now, so let's bring it back. Like, it's all crazy. But that was a great movie. You can find it on YouTube, actually. I think it's a fascinating thing to watch. It's I like, remember it was the f one of the first 3D experiences. And make huh. just for the... Yeah. Like, but I, we, I met him at the improv when he was a teenage comedian and uh, and someone brought him over to meet me and then he's like, I watch you on Comedy Central. I'm like, all right, kid, whatever. He's like 14 or 15 or something. Yeah, you were smoking a cigar. He was sitting, he had like two women on the arm of his chair. He was sitting in smoking a cigar. And I was like, Mr. Williamson, boy, do, is it great to meet you? I'm just a, a young comic trying to get my start in the industry. And he flicked the lit cigarette in my face and goes, here's your first lesson, kid. Don't you fucking talk to me ever again. I didn't flick it at you. I, I said, come up, come here for a second. Open your mouth. And I'm like, yeah. I tapped it. Into yeah. mouth. Mm. And I was like, that's your first lesson in showbiz, kid. Yep. Taste some ashes. Yeah, taste some Taylor ash. Well, that... Mm. That was the second lesson. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, but then, uh, but then, uh, but then he got did became a Disney Channel sensation, and then, uh, and uh, and then uh, he's been doing stand up, and we travel together, and we started this almost alpha podcast. Yeah. Following yeah. in your footsteps. Yes. It's because of you, honestly. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the connection of how you caused this to happen? Did I? Do you know this for no. real? I don't um, think I know this. Yeah. I don't so, think anyone knows. It's <laughs> real. He's one of the producers of Bad Friends, and I was on Bad Friends, and um, yeah, they might call me the lead producer or. Excuse me, you're the producer. Excuse <laughs> yeah, me, sir. I respect. <laughs> Just kidding. No, no I, I respect you, and I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, did you forgive me? Yeah. Okay. I need. Okay. I, I can't. I don't like when I say I apologize, and I hear okay. No, no. <laughs> you forgive it. It's a very alpha move, by it's the a, way. It's a, yeah. Alpha. yeah. Do you know what was also alpha was going, can, I, can you please acknowledge my apology? <laughs> and I think this movie specifically is like maybe just two 
out of touch with everything. It's also just like a movie about woman in witness protection being saved by guy in witness protection right, exactly. from witness protection. It's outdated. Yeah, it's mm. not that we need bigger plots and twists. Like there's more twists. to movies now. This, right. My my brain like I've but, I've like shopped and pitched like uh shows and like my brain is 90s brain where it's just been linear. This happens and this happens and this happens and this happens and that's the end. Yeah. And I'm like, that's great. You know, like for an animated show, whatever. They need this, this, and this. And then there's a huge <laughs> twist. Like this right. movie has no huge twist. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, I guess no, the it guy. No, it actually does. The, it, James Conn is the bad guy. But you see, like, it's, you have, you have, yeah, but it is, is the, is the, the twist basic. and the thing. It's also it a is. twist that happens like maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes into the movie. Yeah. yeah. And it's a million things that you... If you have seen enough of these movies, you're respecting, you know, yeah. at one point. It's formulaic. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, it's, 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 I love a formulaic uh, old 90s movie. Yeah. But, but, but shows now, like CBS shows, they truly, they copy, careful, they copy the, um, pre- they, they announce the premise of the episode over and over again because they know people are watching on their cell, well, on their cell phone. Yeah, it's like, and that's truly what the writers are told. Like, I don't think people are watching CBS on their cell phones. I know there's people. I think people are watching but, CBS in a ho- in a hospital room. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is true that is they got a little more telenovela. Like, oh, this is for like you re- have to repeat information so much, and then yeah, like people who are a little more sophisticated in their taste, like they just can watch anything that is not like a cable show or yeah. something because they don't care about those ratings. But, but yeah, by the way, wildest wildest statistic. You know the CW? Yeah. What do you think the average age is of a CW viewer is? Is that 14? All right, that's what I would think. What do you think? Yeah, 17, 18? 57. <laughs> also, I mean, there's probably a few of those. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Please, John, now, please look that up. Please. I think average. it's also I would... the sad thing about about human beings no is that here. CW is a platform of younger actors being sexy and hot and romantic. Right. That's just like we talked about our mom's love and smut. Older people love like, smut. There's always uh, a group of, I guess, older people. I mean, I never like the CW stereotype of like every person is. Th- yeah. The every f- show is a United Colors of Benetton <laughs> ad, you know. Yeah. Every friend has to be from a different, like if we have five friends, everybody is a different ethnicity, but all of them are like, you know, top of the model class. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the thing is that they're all so attractive. All of them. And There's the, no one, even the extras there is everybody's yeah. like, wait a second, what high school is this? <laughs> I know, Has right? no one here been in the DMV? <laughs> like, right, I, right. Like I live in LA, everyone's beautiful, yeah. But if you ever want like a rude awakening, go to the DMV. And I'm just like, where did all of these terrifying people? Where come do the from? attractive people get their license? <laughs> right. Because I don't see them. You ever go to the mall and you're walking around, you're like, I don't see these mall people anywhere else in the world. I don't yeah. see these mall people at the gas station, at the grocery store. Mall people are a whole different breed. <laughs> you don't see them on the CW show. Oh, by the way, right. uh, John, not not please. The average age of the CW is 58. Point four. Thank you. Wow. Fifty eight point four. Apologies, anybody? Yeah. Wow. John, have you noticed that no one here trusts me? <laughs> yeah, I mean you sh- you already said three or four things that were yeah. not accurate, but yeah. five, <laughs> five months being into fifty eight, these but people are that's, like hmm. Let me watch the what? teenagers Riverdale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's all it's always sex, vampire diaries, sexy teen romance versions of like Archie, or sexy teen romance versions of The Flash. Yeah, I want to see a sexy teen romance version of Where the Wild Things Are. It's <laughs> on one want. hand, they are very telenovela like in terms yeah. of the plot is so simple that I can see older people like following plots. Yeah. Here, on the other hand, I think that it's always gonna be the. Are they male, mostly, these people who are watching the, the, the 58 points? So this was an article in, like, Deadline or That's Hollywood crazy. Reporters, like, it's one of these crazy. things. But you know what it is? Is like, like, Howard Stern is obsessed with all these superhero shows. Yeah. But he grew up loving superheroes. Right. I mean, like, comic books. I watch, yeah, I watched, like, like, The Flash and Legends I watched Marvel, Smallville but... when I was a kid. I, I, and then I, after, like, season five, I'm like, okay, like, Lex Luthor's never going to die. It's a prequel. No one's going to die. Yeah. And, like, it's, it's, gonna, it's just, you're just stretching it's, out. I, I, I also I, think they're killed by the budget. Like, as a, as a, a super, I love super i live and breathe it i read comic books every day like yeah. that's my thing it's i will watch a batman porn just for the scenes that's not porn just to watch batman in a costume move around wait, wait, wait. but watching the hmm. flash towards which, the which end, one is your favorite of those uh triple x arkham <laughs> asylum escape uh but you watch the flash it's yeah. like bad like it's bad terrible. to an unwatchable point especially yeah. i watched like the first six or seven seasons and then i just couldn't take it anymore and it's, 
I, it's, I'm watching these and like I watched 112 no, episodes. I could I take the, the narration is the the the, the scrim the, the artistry of like making a show is pretty bad even it's if so, they have those franchises. They're, they're not trying and like I just want to see the Flash run fast and punch somebody right. in the face and for that to be like that takes what 30 seconds to fill the rest of it's so bad it's yeah. so frustrating but you have I mean you have 10 years of Marvel doing it really well yeah and at a high level and yeah with all the intricate things and you still have the action scenes that are amazing but then they develop the characters I yeah think you care about people them. got really a high with that I don't know if they can keep doing that level of production yeah. all the time and then writing what American shows did you watch growing up I watched Friends that's the only one that I could really understand I think it was universal enough and then when I moved to the US it was like the beginning of big HBO so yeah. I, oh, nice. like Sex and the City and Sex and, and the City is the best and Sopranos and then with I would watch them with subtitles to see you know yeah. like, and, <laughs> oh I know I used to watch Three Stooges in Portuguese oh but com comedy I mean I don't no, know that was I don't know either yeah. John Soy victima de la circumstancia <laughs> Uh, that's Spanish. Or whatever, same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but comedy translates. If it's, I think that's why Friends was, you know, at the time, like I think Seinfeld was bigger in the US, but everywhere else was Friends because it's a simpler, you don't, there's no much like wordplay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a simpler thing that everybody understands. So it's a group of friends doing this. It's I like, get why you like it. Like, not everyone's gorgeous, no diversity. You're like, this is what. Right. I it's like, <laughs> it's, that's why I want to go to the US. You know, yeah. like, I want that. I want to live in that apartment. Like, yeah. Like, they're all complaining about being poor, but you're like, but that apartment seems lovely. <laughs> yeah. In New York, I, I then went to New York and like, oh, wait a second. That yeah. apartment, those apartments are not like that. <laughs> Have you done the, the Warner Brothers lot tour? Where you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. picture a central perk yeah I do I want to do that I haven't no. done that but they have like the Batmobile and stuff I would oh, love to yeah. see it yes they have all the superhero stuff it's yeah. pretty good yeah Big what they don't have any eraser uh, they guns. and that's a Warner Brothers movie do you know what surprised me about eraser <laughs> wow look at you Is it, yeah bringing us back dude <laughs> fucking pro host that's where I take my notes mm. um I, I admire you <laughs> thank you almost did you say I admire you te admiro okay te admiro te admiro Tell Amiro? Te admiro. Amiro, like love? Amiro. Admiro. Admiro. Oh, like admiro, admire. Admire. Si, si. A, D. Si, si. I studied Japanese growing up. Yeah. I. So how, how do you say it? Yeah, he tried so hard to get us to talk about Eraser again. Uh, I can uh, ask me another question. I can probably say it though. In Japanese? Yeah. How do you say... Um, how do you see there's a big giant lizard monster attacking Tokyo? You mean like, a, like a, a, something that a three-year-old would say? I, I need to go to the bathroom. Um... Uh, yo puedo uh, el baño. That's the Japanese. Word? That's Japanese. Yeah, all uh, of your languages like yeah. in your countries. I can say where's the bathroom. Uh huh. Toilet o doko desu ka? Or toilet o ku desai? To toilet, please. You're gonna get canceled. <laughs> no, I'm speaking <laughs> properly. Domo oregato, tela san. Oh. Yeah, see, I. Mashi mashte. <laughs> Don't touch my mustache. That's how you learn it as a kid. Don't touch my mustache. You're welcome. Don't touch my mustache. That's what they teach you as a kid. Ichi, one. Ni, two. San, three. Sh, she, four. Canceled. Go, five. Go. Roku, like Roku and Roku and roll. Now in Roku. The, Am I having the, a stroke? What are you talking <laughs> about? Yeah. I'm counting in Japanese. Oh. Anyways, eraser. Okay. Yeah. So here's what surprised me about Eraser. Yeah. <laughs> Most of these movies are like like Commando or Cobra or any of those. It's just like guy works for an agency. Agency turns out to be bad. Guy has to prove agency is bad against all odds. Like that's like a cliche of these yeah. movies. I In Eraser. Like government. Yeah. Up, yeah. Yeah. Government's corrupt and guy needs to uncorrupt the government because he's so uncorruptible. But he's also the biggest. Like, I love those yeah. 80s movies where they're like. Yeah. They're afraid of him. Like, mm -hmm. they, like, want to kill him and then he's not dead. Or they're, like, yeah, like James Conn kept going, God, it's John. Like, I love the, like... Anyway, they, at one point in this movie, were pitching this. And they're like, what sets us apart? What's different? And somebody was like, uh, big giant laser plasma guns. And they're like, that's it. Say nothing more. That's all we need. We just need four plasma guns and the rest can be just like every other movie, unchanged completely. Absolutely. But these I guns is like that formula that you were talking about and that MacGuffin that that excuse to make the movie is that they Yeah. 
the it, secret weapon. And then they go, they go, uh, oh, there's plasma guns. It shoots a ball of aluminum at close to light speed. And they shoot it and it's like across the screen. <laughs> right. It also, you can CGI. also see like, they like, kind of like an infrared, uh, yeah. uh right? Like, mm, yeah, can, like x-ray of the, of the interior of the houses i mean it was 96 so the effects all the oh, the effects are terrible there's also a part where they're like going through all the walls yes looking for Arnold schwarzenegger they shoot at him and vanessa williams they get behind a kitchen island and for the, some like a, fucking reason uh, this is, kitchen island is like lead no, it's, line it's, it's, it's a it's a refrigerator so oh is it uh, yeah. that's why but yeah uh, that's yeah, why you yeah. buy a good refrigerator there's something i wrote down what about, there were some lines in this movie that i adored but i wrote down my favorite one and i just want to read it before i forget yeah Vanessa Williams. Oh, they uh, they gave him the car. They gave Arnold Schwarzenegger the car, and they go, "Hey, here are the keys. Well, you know, burns as much oil as it does gas." <laughs> what does what <laughs> does that mean? Burns as much oil as it does. I don't get that at all. Crappy car. Crappy I, that, car. That's, burn- that's what I got. I mean, I'm not a yeah. car person. Maybe. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Like crappy car. Yeah. Burns <laughs> oil. You know, but I oh, one of the scenes that stood out to me is just, uh, someone who's like tried to get a movie made before. And, like I'm just like, and like they tell me like that's gonna get really expensive, whatever, whatever. But it's Arnold and it's a big movie, so like this is even like a high budget thing. But like it just seems so complicated. There's a scene where he jumps over uh, off a roof. And the bad guys are down there, and he's like being coy and quiet. And being then, coy. But then birds—is that the right word to use? No. <laughs> he's like being shy, being like well, he's reserved. Being, yeah, he's being. No, like, he's being sneaky. sneaky. Yeah, sneaky. Yeah, yeah. He's being sneaky. Like being stealthy. stealthy. He's being stealthy. Respect. And then, uh, <laughs> so he's being alpha and not coy and stealthy. So he, he's like gently going over the thing. But then birds come by and go, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. what's up? Can you do bird noise?" <laughs> that was pretty. Can you do bird noise? <laughs> Yeah, kind of exactly what I did, but good. Eddie, what did you think? <laughs> um, so then, uh, uh, so the so then the guys go, huh? And I'm just like, how long did they? And Arnold's in that shot with the birds, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Then he. How long did they? You're a filmmaker. Don't you think that like, they have to hire bird people, train birds? They have to come across it. I'm not even doing a bit. They have yeah. to like cl- walk. And Arnold, it's not a stunt double. Like it's not like just do the bird scene. And I'll come in later. It's, if I was writing, if I was like the producer, I'd be like, can we skip the bird thing? Can we like, like, have him step on a light bulb or something? Seems like, like a logistical nightmare. <laughs> it just seems like such a schlep to get these birds to come in. Like, But he he's always so involved in the movies that he makes that he wants everything. You know, he is a real movie star in the sense yeah. that he likes to promote the movies. He's not like, yeah. oh, I, I'm done with this. He's like, no, no, no. This I have to sell the movie. I'm going to do. So whatever it needs for the movie, yeah. he'll be he'll be there. If I spend $20,000 on that, that's my guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be the director and I'll be Arnold Schwarzenegger fighting for the birds. <laughs> Try and talk me out of it. Hey Arnie, love this film. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I love everything about it. I, I do I too. Could, like just you know, this is so good. There's just one it's scene. I, it's like Terminator, but different. I agree. It's gonna be a hit. I just think there's this one scene where we, like you climb. O- this is one scene where you climb over the roof and then yeah, the, and the birds. Yeah, the birds. <laughs> I love like, the birds. I know. I I love it too. But I just think it's not worth it. I think we could, we're gonna right? spend half a we're gonna spend half a day doing it and like the birds you, make them <laughs> make the movie. I know, but it's it's literally, it's like it's maybe a one second scene. It's literally gonna spend we're gonna spend we're gonna spend probably eight hours and twenty thousand dollars. Listen day. here, peep squeak. <laughs> we need the birds in the movie. <laughs> I want to clip that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the. I didn't know I had that in me. You. That was right on. Spot on. I, spot on. Yeah. Can I tell you what I watched recently starring Arnold Schwarzenegger? This what? latest thing I watched on YouTube, and this was years ago, this was four years ago, but I found it, it popped up my algorithm. I hate the algorithm. It's the worst <laughs> thing in my life, but it also gets me. It knows I need scammer payback videos of these scammers, of, of people t- of getting the scammers who steal money from people and like them getting them. It knows I need this this Jewish guy in New York who goes to different countries and Chinese food restaurants and speaks Chinese and learns the languages. And like, then they go, whoa, you're a white guy. How do you know these things? I I need that. And then also knew I needed a reunion, a Zoom reunion during COVID of kindergarten cop. Mm -hmm. All the kids from kindergarten cop, where are they now? I clicked on it and I was like, this is whatever. Couldn't stop watching. 40 minutes in, Arnold pops in. Hey guys, how are you? Like, that's not bad for like a half-assed impression. Thank you. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah. Uh, and then like, and he's like, you gotta come over to my house sometime. And I, I need, to, I need a sequel. I need to know did, did, did he really? No. I believe, I believe. You know, what? that's I an empty it. offer. 
<laughs> I, well, he's a very charismatic guy. He yeah. does. I feel like you know. Thank you. Do yeah. what I love. He pops into stuff like that all the time. He's he's got a very big internet presence. It's like personally Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. It's not like somebody on his team doing it. Like so, like he posts on Reddit a lot. Like somebody will just post like something and just the top comment, and you'll look at it, and it's Governor Schwarzenegger is his name. Like he just. I'm guessing yeah, it's here. someone else typing for him. No, you think it's him blogging into Reddit. Hundred percent. Yeah. That I don't know, but it is. It is. I. I do think that he was that committed all his his life, and it's one of those people that I. It's kind of like, kind of like a dream, American dream. Like yeah. every oh, yeah. step of the way is like, how can one person be so many things and always at the top? Right. There's like a billion other Austrian immigrants in America that are like, <laughs> all I need is my big break. All I right, need is but to also get he's like jacked as fuck. It's not that he's a great actor. Yeah. That, right. Like he doesn't. But he, I mean, he married a Kennedy, yeah, governor. I don't know, a Wait, Republican governor Kennedy? in in California. Maria Shriver's came from the Kennedy. Maria Shriver's a Kennedy. Yeah, I didn't know that. Wow, blowing people's minds here. Yeah, <laughs> but let's be honest. Have you watched Eraser Two? No. Did you see this? There's an Eraser. There two. is an Eraser Two. So they were going to do set up. It's open ended at the end. They they were going to do a sequel, but it became a reboot. So they tried to reboot the whole thing again. So, so there's a business of like, was this Warner Brothers? You said yeah. Universal does this too, where like they have a property from like 20, 30 years ago. They're like, well, let's just make a straight to DVD like like weird sequel that has n not the same people. Yeah. Yeah. American I Psycho Two starring Mila Kunis. The the the, the Real. Yeah. Real John. Yes. The the they that's the worst part of Hollywood, you know. Yeah. They has a wonderful things, but then this idea that I mean, I think George Lucas uh, just got a uh, you know the Palm Door, the the honor honorific yeah. one, uh, and he was saying like, well, the studios have no imagination. They're making all movies. No one is you know, and it's yeah. that sort of thing that people who are in charge don't love movies. Right. They just want a couple that said, "Oh, they need to pay their their you know, um, all the all the debt that they have." So yeah. they just they want to go for safe stuff. And constant growth is yes. crazy to me. Like, and like HBO and Netflix are like, "We need to grow, we need to grow." And it's like, "You were doing just fine." And eventually, they they're gonna ruin the whole model. Yeah, exactly. Because they were like, "Wait a second, HBO was the thin." HBO has like, yeah, you have the marker of HBO and you trust it. Like I still have that, and then I and now and now Max, it's a slowly slowly going. Max out. Originals, you're like, oh, maybe this show isn't good, but like you don't expect an HBO show to be good. It can be not your thing, but it's still a good show. Absolutely. Yeah. Modo. A, a real question about this type of movie, if not a racer, like do you guys? So when when I when we talk about oh, let's pick a movie that you both like, and I know it was kind of like a half joke, but is why do you think this movie was something that you both said yes to? I legit. This was, I think I, because you brought up, because it's, it's hard. You're like, pick a favorite movie that the right. two of you have and like, and that we haven't done before. And it's like, Ugh. but like you listed like four and then you said Eraser and I was excited and he was excited. I, in like 1998, I probably would say this is my favorite movie. It's nostalgic. Really? Yeah, I, I huh. loved it. I honestly, I, I just love that genre. And I feel like Eraser is one of those movies that is not leaning into the silliness of the genre while right. still taking part in the silliness of the genre. Like okay. Commando, it's a little tongue in cheek. Last yeah. Action Hero, it's a little tongue. No, Cobra this one takes itself serious. It takes itself seriously, right. but then still does things like say goodbye, goodbye. You know, that still yeah, has yeah, those. There moments. are no lines, You've but they think erased. they're being cool. You've just been erased. You've just right. been erased. You know, he's like, this is it. This is gonna be on the doll. You pull the string. <laughs> By the way, do you know on all the Bill? You know, uh, Tom Hanks has all the cartoons from Toy Story and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a brother who his full time career probably makes more money than God. He does Tom Hanks' voice for all action figures, video games, toys, theme parks. That's interesting. They have the same voice. Yeah. That's he just does it. Hey! Yeah, <laughs> I thought I could. Oh, uh, you're I nailed yeah. Arnold earlier, but well, Tom Hanks didn't. There, come. He sounds like Ray Romano. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm stuck on this island. I mean, I don't know if this is 100% true, but there is like this person who does voices really well who can do Morgan Freeman and Morgan Freeman has hired him to do a lot of voiceover yeah. acting huh. for him. I mean, uh, the, Ross Marquardt, I don't know, is that how you say his name? He does, um, is a Marvel, does, does a lot of voice. Right. Yeah. But like he, Hugo Weaving, uh, speaking of Matrix, yeah. played the Red Skull in Captain America and then Red Skull came back in Infinity War and they couldn't have, he was like a conflict or just didn't want to do it. So they had Ross Marquardt, Marquardt or whatever, however you say his yeah. name. Yeah. CGI made him look like Hugo Weaving 
put the red skull mask on and then he did a Hugo he Weaving voice. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and he's done that multiple times on like Marvel shows yeah. where he's doing an impression of an actor that just didn't want to do the cartoon. <laughs> um, what is your favorite scene in, in, in Eraser? <laughs> I, I think it's classic Arnold, very, very predatory. When he, and you're, it's also kind of uh, Chekhov's rifle. Like literally, because it's a rifle. Yeah. Like they keep showing this gun. They show like the schematics. They show the guys trying to shoot at Arnold with it. The whole time you're thinking like, I can't wait for my big beefy boy to get his hands on this, on this plasma rifle. Them, so and then he <laughs> fucking, right? The, when James Conn and him fall, they crash through the shipping container, picks up two of them, Dude. double fisting the <laughs> plasma rifles. That's like the quintessential. That's, I, that's I feel a, like an this iconic, movie, you know, it was, you have to have that in the poster in the in the yeah. trailer everywhere if you told me this movie was written by ai i would be like <laughs> huh that makes sense yeah, yeah totally that's a great point like well like the, the, the writer's strike was all about stopping preventing this for the next what two years or something <laughs> yeah, right. like, like we have two more years of no movies you're gonna big yeah because the studios as you guys know studios were like uh how about we have ai write movies and then we hire writers to punch it up what the fuck are we talking about here what are we doing here but you're right this is a movie that could easily be made by ai but uh with that said um scene that stands out to me i enjoy i love the 90s simple writing i just it struck i love a save the cat just cookie cutter then line it's, it's it's nostalgic for me whatever and but like the guy at the beginning who's like who, by the way died tragic well, several people in the movie died tragically in their 40s, <laughs> by the way if you look yep. at any of the actors yes. um but the guy oh the who, actors died tragically the the beef head kind of the meathead uh gangster guy he died that helps him in the end he was on some yeah. disney disney show i think later on was he i was thinking of watching this movie i was like i've never seen this guy before and i never seen him ever since. he's such a character I'm like what's how what's he up to oh he's dead and then but the guy who eats the the alka seltzer or whatever that is yes alka- but he, so he died he died just he had like a weird controversy like his girlfriend <laughs> friend was killed in his house somehow and then really? he got okay then he was okay then he died <laughs> anyways um but he there's a scene where like uh because the bad guys are after him and then arnold g- g- saves him and his wife and then she's like like tony what were you doing you like like i saved you from the I, they heard that you were at the pizza restaurant and then they tony what, what were you doing at the pizza restaurant? Uh, they got good cannolis i had to go there i knew the yeah. gangsters are there but i had to eat some italian food they can't get good italian food around here whatever the line is yeah. like i'm just like that makes sense he Classic. risked the life of him and his wife because he had to get that food you couldn't there's no uber eats back then <laughs> no uber eats you couldn't just put a fake name and an address right <laughs> but imagine. but but those type of scenes yeah they're gone from today's movies yeah, it's a very well, that same scene. I I really like when he closes the guy's head in the freezer and then twists his body to yes. break his neck. <laughs> yes, that's ingenuity, dude. That's we've never seen that before. The, <laughs> the deaths were all kind of like, like, like. Uh, there's no just like sh- gunshot. It was a, 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 every everything had to be like something a little bit. There's something a, a, a little like more chore- choreography. Oh, yes, you know? Vanessa Williams' boyfriend being like, "Come on, babe. I know we broke up, but I use your shower," and then gets <laughs> yeah. shot. Like sent back to like that, that was cool too uh, my, I think my favorite moment is one that uh, when you guys mentioned the movie the first image that came to mind is him jumping off the airplane and going through the oh my god uh, oh my god through the you like, know I, I, I still think like that shot holds up I still think like because they one actually of those, did it he's fa- you they, can tell he's, there's a person he did, a, in he a, did a fall he did a I think he has CGI miniatures and a real fall all huh. mixed together so that's I think why he holds up better he really did the skydiving no no I think it was just like a tall building or some sort of like I mean somebody did so, though there was footage yeah. of some stunt guy yeah 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 and, but he, he did a fall for sure when he does the little, the little flip yeah and then the studio part and all that and it's like ah that's a classic action movie moment i, I love he's my gonna jump from without the parachute and he's gonna cut he's to, gotta catch it yeah and he throws it the, the, i love that they're like he's gonna get sucked into the jet engine and they're like you're gonna get sucked into the jet engine idiot and he's like i'm gonna kill these two innocent pilots and then yeah. <laughs> just takes the plane my girlfriend is uh I love her to death. She is not in the entertainment industry at all. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many things. She like watches movie in a ways that I don't because I'm very like analytical and I know that it's a movie and I know that I just you see it. Break it down. And yeah. she's watching this movie and he's falling from the plane and he's getting his parachute. And she's like, did Arnold really do this? <laughs> is, I can't believe they made Arnold do this. And like, is he going to be okay? Like she's worried. It's right, so but That's funny. incredible that if a movie like this with, you know, in in today's world, like it still gets that those sort of emotions. I mean, like, oh, that's something they did right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
But what's so, funny is I watched the new Mission Impossible movie. Yeah. And like he skied that. That's all incredible. He skied that for real. That's incredible. But I'm not even making a joke. The way my brain watches watches this from growing up watching this kind of shit. Like he's like, like he's really jump. Like he's, yeah. his cheeks are doing all this and this stuff, you know. <laughs> he's actually, face. he's it's actually sky. It looks fake to me. That's so funny. Because in Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, skydiving, that doesn't happen. He's just cool, like, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, but he's a. <laughs> yeah, also, no, Arnold Schwarzenegger was kind of skinnier in this movie. Did we? Yeah. notice that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's way slimmer. Did anyone else do this? By the way, I looked up how old he was in this movie, and I'm like. Okay, he's like late forties. I got ten years. I got to, ten to, years before I can star in a movie like a race to get in shape. I <laughs> yeah, we're gonna say good luck, pal. Yeah. Hey, thank. You. I believe in you. Hey, thank. You. Wait. <laughs> no, I do. I really do. I, I honestly believe in you. you. So wait. Yeah. Wait. Maybe not an, on a new Eraser, but yeah, I think like something. Eraser yeah. three. Yeah. Maybe like the baby from Eraser Head <laughs> two. You could do that. Look, the the director I'll, of this movie, his first movie was um, Nightmare on Elm Street three. Okay. Dream Warriors. Oh, and that's it was, a good one. It was something that uh, Warner Brothers didn't want to do. Uh, New Line, sorry. Didn't want to do. And he convinced them to do it. And then the movie franchise switched forever. And then it made more, more money with that movie than with the other two movies. So it was huh. like the uh, highest growth. And then he was able... So he crafted his career with things like that that you wouldn't expect. Did something like The Mask just before that. And then and then this one. And they were all number ones. You never heard of him. Huh. Uh, he so he had a long break. But I looked as I'm to be... The, yeah, like a, 11 years or something. And then he started making like John Travolta be like the DVD. Yeah, movies. It, he put John Travolta and Bruce Willis back together. Oh, yeah? And then... Oh, huh. Yeah, before I think one of Bruce Willis's last movies, huh? And that uh, also brings us back to Freddy Krueger's penis that we started this whole. In there, in there. Bye, Freddy Krueger's penis. Uh, can I tell you something. Yeah, we are so like like well, this show exists because of you, and then you let you let us join you 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 let us join your channel, and this is really special to us. Like, thank you. You're you're a you're like the. What is he? That's like that. he he came, but he walked so we could run. Mm-hmm. Mm, a pioneer. Then, you're a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my pleasure. I think we should do it again. I think like especially because you guys are movie people, and I love talking to movie people. I can talk about oh. movies all day long. And uh, yeah, I, I have a question that I didn't ask. Maybe it's a good one. When did you guys thought decided? Someone told you you guys were funny and that you were going to take this huge, insane risk path that okay i'm gonna do this for a living <laughs> i guess well when i first realized i might be funny yeah is um i remember in sixth grade sitting in class and my teacher hated me i never did my homework i was never a jerk but i never did my homework and like, i remember raising my hand and she called on everyone for, it was like a half hour conversation she called on everyone except for me <laughs> and just like th- clocking that people are laughing at my misery <laughs> I wish I I wish I was like 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 Theo Vaughn's like yeah I, I I had sex with a girl when I was fourteen and uh, she thought I was funny and like that's how I knew I was funny because I was just really cool and stuff I'm making that up but, like that's right right like, comedy yeah, yeah, yeah I happen to be Jewish guy oh I'm self deprecating and it brings people joy and I remember in seventh grade I asked somebody sincerely in history class I said does the judicial system have anything to do with Jewish people <laughs> and everyone laughed and I was, so I, I guess learned. That, that being dumb it, on is funny. It yeah, give you dopamine, like you being like one the co- cause in that. I got the attention. Right. Was, that was my way. And then, yeah. So uh, and then I start. yeah, I don't know. That's my, how I learned I might be funny. And uh, But I, you didn't decide to do this in seventh grade or whatever. No, I, I did. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> you, you kind of did. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I started when I was 17. I started, I started writing when I was 16. I fell in love with stand-up comedy through watching talk about mockumentaries that are weird like i love pro wrestling growing up that's all i was obsessed with it and on comedy central there was a, a documentary on andy kaufman but it was a mockumentary you can find it on i think it's on archive.org it was like an old hbo documentary called i'm from hollywood and uh and it has like because he was on ta- andy kaufman was on taxi and like that's when there was like four channels so he was like, the biggest star and uh he uh so the it has uh danny devito 
and it has um, I think Tony Danza's on it. But they're all talking about how how odd Tony, uh, Andy Kaufman was because while he was on, but it, they're playing it's a it's a fake documentary mixed right. with reality, so you don't know. Because like, we don't know what happened to Andy, but it's I thought it was real as a kid because hmm. they're dissecting how they're talking about how Andy while he was the biggest star on TV. He would go to Nashville. This is when wrestling was regional, like it wasn't national. And he would go and wrestle women out of the crowd, and then did all this stuff. And like he also worked at Jerry's Deli on Sundays as a as a busboy, unironically. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so like I loved wrestling, and like that made me pay attention to comedy. Anyway, that's my long story. Huh. Okay. Is that interesting? But I, I encourage Thanks. people to watch that. I'm from Hollywood. I found it on archive.org. It's just really weird, interesting. If you're into comedy and wrestling or anything okay stuff. so then we do a follow-up uh then in w at what point did you decide okay i'm gonna stick with this <sighs> um I I want... Clume said you're <laughs> moving on um that's too late no <laughs> i feel like that's I a good moment but it is uh you're I've, already committed at that point man i've i've th i've wanted to be get out so many times i've always had it right. really small to big carrot dangling in front of me of like this could be the next thing you know and then like, and then after I did America's Got Talent, I was like 10 years in where I was like, now I've tasted the really big success. I'm like, oh, I, I know I proved it to myself. I can do it. Right. And then, um, I don't know if I answered your question. No, but it, and did you realize yeah, that it's never going to be big enough that no matter what the goal is, that the, yeah. you, you keep moving the goalposts no matter what? Um, but you know, I mean, as an artist, that's, <laughs> I, I remember like, even like after I put on my first special, I'm like, oh, then you just do it again. Yeah. There's no like, there's no making it moment because it's like, oh yeah, it I did this, but it wasn't this big. And there's then, no making it uh, as an artist. There's no making the sense of like, well, now my, my, my parents will get back together. Right, you know right, I mean? right. Yeah. Nothing gets fixed. That's what you all really wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Parents to love each other. Again. <laughs> right. I'm gonna heal my parents. I mean, love. look at Steven Spielberg made, um, you know, 20 movies where like, oh, his parent trauma yeah. are in there all the time. So it's like, you know, as an artist, you guess you exercise, exercise that, but do you think he was behind the, it? He was at monitor for the <laughs> Fablemans, and he was like, kiss her again. Yeah. <laughs> kiss her again. Tell her you love her. What's what's your deal? What's yeah, my deal? yeah. I loved comedy. I I was all, we're a big com like stand up house. You know, on Comedy Central every Friday would have new Comedy Central presents, and we watch it like religiously as a family. And it was kind of Comedy Central was like a staple, just kind of a background. Yeah. What MSNBC is now to my parents, it used to be Comedy Central, and I just loved it. We were always watching comedy specials, and uh, I wanted, to, I I just liked attention. I was always like trying to be, I just loved people laughing at me and validating me and I just wanted to be have attention. And then the movie Funny People came out when I was like 11, 12 maybe. And it basically just shows what it takes to be a comedian. And it felt really attainable. It was like, it's a lot more than it's, you know, I didn't know people were writing these jokes down or if they were just coming up with this off the top of their head. But once I realized that it's like, you're writing jokes and there's a joke structure and then you go up and you try it. And I I wanted to do that. Wrote a bunch of jokes in a in this book, like as a secret like diary. And my brother, you know, as brothers do, like went rummaging through my room, found it, and was actually like, hey, these are really funny. My first, it's like a I wrote a joke about like Law and Order, and I was like, I really want to live in L. A. But I'm afraid of every time I hear that dun dun, I know something awful happens somewhere in the city. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good bit, good bit. I should bring it back. <laughs> and uh, and then I, he was once like I got the validation from my brother that he thought the jokes were funny. I sent emails to uh, Pete Holmes. How Nick old are Crow. you? At this I was moment. like thirteen. So uh, yeah, naive enough to to do this yeah. thing. Yeah, Say, like oh, I'm gonna but send I sent like gonna send to everybody, like Neil Brennan, T.J. <laughs> Miller, Nick Kroll, Aziz, like everybody, and Nick Kroll. Uh, Pete Holmes wrote me back. Some, some like T.J. Miller also wrote me back, but it was like a fuck off kid kind of right. kind of thing. But like Pete Holmes wrote this three paragraph like you need to find stage time and if you can't find stage time because you're young you need to make it yourself oh, like about repetition and, all. and it just like my favorite comedian it's like you know you're you're playing intramural football and then joe namath comes down and is like oh you got you just got to stick to it like it was like that so it just mm -hmm. lit a fire under my ass and uh, i had a really supportive dad who i still am so grateful for because i wouldn't have done that yeah. for 
my 13 year old son if he wanted Absolutely to do that. Absolutely not. But yeah. <laughs> my dad was raised Jehovah's Witness, so he didn't really have any passions he could do. So he's like, you know, he's the antithesis of that. So he's just supportive of everything we wanted to do. And I started going to an open mic, and then that open he'd mic. He'd take you to auditions and open mic, yeah, things like that. Me, I mean, I didn't, I, acting wasn't anything I wanted to do. I loved movies and I like like writing and stuff, right. but I didn't want to act. And uh, that just kind of fell into my lap. But I was just going to open mics, and then I was doing, you know, showcases, and then I was doing this, and then like three years in, uh, I came down to LA for the first, maybe it was less than that, a couple of years in, I came down to LA, and then I got a manager and an agent. It just kind of like, snowballed it's one of those things where i don't think it was a i don't think it's bad because i think it happened the way it's supposed to happen but there is a part of me that's like i got into it as a fun hobby it was my interest it was like yeah. i wasn't i wasn't trying to make money i wasn't trying to do anything i just wanted to do it i loved it yeah and it was kind of became something where i had to you know monetize it and i kind of lost my love for it a little bit when i was when we became a real that now it's a job it's it, not just something yeah it was like 21 or 22 and you know i'd spent the last like eight years of my life doing this and i was like i felt like i forfeited of normal teenage years and so yeah i kind of and recently i've like since pandemic i guess i've found my love for it again and that's fun but uh it was definitely uh it was a long road to get to where i am yeah It's it's interesting Mentally. because that that type of uh, road is the oh from an exterior perspective is like oh this is one of the people who did it easily or like yeah it came quick to him and usually the stories are mostly like I just fight him fight him fight him and I guess everything and then maybe you get a chance you were like oh you were given this yeah opportunity and they're like come down to LA I'm like okay and they're like you're great I'm like you really think so like it didn't ever feel hard right. and then once it started to feel hard I was getting to the point where I was then burned it, out right right yeah. It's like how to keep it and how to keep a normal childhood. I, you know, yeah. I, I work with many younger people. You know, I work with Jen Ortega in a, in, a, in a movie and she was 17 at that point, but she was already a star and talking to her parents and it's like, oh, you see that moment where like it could go really oh, yeah. crazy or it's, you can like how to keep these people real, it's especially a, if you have success. Toxic in industry And when you're putting a kid in that toxic industry, yeah. you don't realize like more than the weight of the of getting the job or being good enough or beating other people for the job. It's the weight of like you forfeited normal childhood for this. So if this doesn't work out, you've lost out on like two big parts of your life. Yeah. And that's like scary. It's really scary to think that this isn't going to work out. And I didn't go to Friday Night Lights at my high school because right. I was going to, you know, Tommy T's in Pleasanton instead. And if that doesn't work out, then like, what did I missed out on a regular life yeah, in do. pursuit of something that also didn't work out? Like, that's terrifying. Yeah, it's a comedy club, by the way. Yeah, it's, funny, it's like Pleasanton. normal to us, but like, uh, like someone else is done business. Tommy, you went to Tommy T's in Pleasanton. <laughs> that's a city. That's Check a comedy club in a weird city. Right, right. But it is, it is a scary that how oh, I gave up my childhood and teenage yeah. years for I, I don't regret it you're right but can I make you feel better at my teenage years I was sitting in my in my bedroom on Friday and Saturday night downloading full seasons of DuckTales yeah, well, yeah which I forfeited. Is, is most comedians I don't think when you talk to comedians <laughs> their their early lives are not yeah. as good as you've been thinking I forfeited like, my teenage years right, right? you're a weird uh, DuckTales <laughs> right 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 yeah, I forfeited like fucking hot chicks yeah, uh, being the right. quarterback of a football touché. team touche touche <laughs> but what I, what I love about Joey like he's like <laughs> He's like a real, I do this thing. Uh, like, he's like, he's a real comedian. Italian. He's oh. a real Italian. <laughs> you know, he's, you know, you know, if I need pizza, yeah. if I need to order some pizza, I call Joey, go, where do I go? I you found know? a cheese. Well, kind of what I love about Joey, besides what I was about to say, <laughs> is he has this racial ambiguity about him. <laughs> he's telling me he went to Guatemala. Everyone thinks he's Guatemalan. He's very customable, you know, he, 90 yeah, days. Exactly. And I can, I you like would that. think, yeah. you would think. He, he could play Super, <laughs> Super Mario. Say the nice thing you were going to say before this, though. <laughs> yeah. He's like a real comedian comedian and like and this is i have like a uh what do you call it like i kind of mourn what our industry used to or what the art form of comedy used to be and it still is but it's not to everybody like it used to be a calling like this guy whether he likes it or not he's a comedian like you see this guy walking and see like i like as a comedian like you can s smell it like it's just uh -huh. ugh, you know BO. but like <laughs> that makes it be but like he has he has he's a special soul of a comedy funny guy and like now because of social media and and whatever and and, and everything is like everyone like i was talking to my friend's kid who goes to chapman and she's a wonderful person so it's not fault she's like she's like oh you're a comedian i have a few friends who are comedians i'm like no you don't right everybody's like a, a few friends who do comedy no, but right yeah. but i mean like there is that like are you a 
I don't know. Like, who, who identifies anyone as anything? But like, it's now. I talked to my friend's dad about this, who's a photographer, and he's like, "Yeah, now you know. Now you know how it felt when the cameras came out. This, this, Everyone's a photographer. Yeah, Everyone's a podcast, a filmmaker, a filmmaker, a podcaster, filmmaker, whatever, whatever. Right, like, yeah. And it's not only people doing it as a calling. I mean, by the way, there was plenty of dirtbag losers to the back in the day too. But right. it was less. Of, it was just. Now there's literally thousands and thousands of comedians. It used to be like you go to cities, like I would go to San Francisco and like back in the day, and like there was like eight people really doing it. Like, oh, it's Ali Wong, Mo Mandela, Moshe Cash, and Nico Santos. Like, like I, I know it. Now every city has uh, thousands of people, and like I knew, I, knew, I watched every special that came before me. Yeah. I knew, like I, I knew every comic that came before me. I knew the people in every city. I'm such a comedy nerd, and like. I don't know uh, who anyone it, is. It happens. It happens with all media. I, I, I used to tell my my students, you know, you can watch every single silent film ever made. Yeah. But you cannot watch every single movie made last year. Right. Wow. Huh. That's how 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 crazy. That's interesting. Yeah. The world is. You know. It's really... and his students are like, wow. Yeah. No. <laughs> He's, he's, wow. he's very smart. He's uh, <laughs> profound. Uh. Can I tell you, I took a video film class in high school and mm -hmm. it ruined my v movie watching. It's truly it's just a, a little bit completely destroyed me. Because to me, it's like working with comedians and ruined my, my, my uh, pleasure of like just laughing, you know, and just yeah, going you know, to it's darkness. It's like, yeah. yeah, exactly. So like, oh my God, these people yeah. are <laughs> dark. No more. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I look for what's wrong now when I watch movies. I look for like they showed us like Saved by the Bell, for example, because it's the easiest thing. But like, oh, there's a microphone in that. <laughs> the rocker, the, I, the I look continuity. For continuity of the water and the clock, not in like a, a mean way, but I'm, I'm fascinated by how do they keep up with this. Yeah, and I notice like the hands where they're holding because I'm just looking for the thing what's wrong in it and they, I think that's also a comedian brain thing of fine like you can make fun of that but I was always <laughs> really good at those like highlights magazine it's like the thing in America the, the year yeah. the dentist remember highlights magazine yeah. but like, like look for what's wrong the, in the seven picture. differences <laughs> yeah like I, I'm always so I, it's fucked me in my entire life <laughs> But it helps me as a writer and a comedian to find what's weird in situations, yeah. you know? But there's people like your girlfriend who's just a sweet <laughs> love who's enjoying her life and not right. a cynical motherfucker. And those like are me. the people we make the movies for. Yeah, We're not exactly. making them for you because it's like, you know, if you are paying attention to things like that, you you are lost. You the movie doesn't interest you. She's watching she watches a movie and this is happening to the characters. Like she's like, I can't believe she's like, it breaks my heart that this happened to them. Right, right, right. And to me I'm like, I understand Empathy. the story. Yeah. I, there's like a disconnect. I can, I'm watching the show and I like feel bad for the kid. But yeah. you know, there's I'm just like, how much? How much of the person is this a union movie? How much did they get paid? And like, is that Nepo baby? I'm like, oh, that's. Oh, I wonder if you took the ten percent back in. Or right, that's that's a horrible way. To oh, be yeah. honest, I tried to go back to the way I felt like in when I was 14, 16, watching. There is no movie that I watch today that has that impact, right? Like that magic of like yeah. believing. I've like, seen the dinosaurs for the first time. It's like. This is, I mean, magical. Now I can watch whatever you want to create. I'm never going to feel like that, yeah. you know? Uh, so it's a little bit of that too, the cynical or like just being older and more, yeah. you know, paying attention. There to are movies things. that have done that for me though. Dune 2 was one of those movies. Like there are certain movies that happen would come like, out where I forget I'm watching a movie and that's when it's so special. Yeah, I, not doing that. I really look for that. You know, I try yeah. to go to a movie to like it and to get lost and then that part of my brain like in big mom's my favorite for me big mama's <laughs> yes yeah yeah Medea goes to prison was one of my, oh my <laughs> yes what a those are the ones film. that touch your heart what a film oh ochre <laughs> uh, I also think that there are movies like Dune 2 I think that like my favorite movie from last year was probably American Fiction mm. and a big part of what I loved about that movie is that I'm watching it and I'm going oh this is a very well written movie like this, uh, the scene, I'm like, oh, this is good. This character is a really well written character. Like I'm not looking yeah. at it and like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen to this guy next. I'm appreciating it mm -hmm. as the art while still appreciating it as a movie. Yeah, and it has that meta thing in it too. Yeah, so you can be a part of that. And he won best screenplay. Yeah, and it deserves it. Yeah. What do you do as a film lover? Like, because I mean, I'll watch movies, but then I still I'm on my phone sometimes too. Honestly, I'm a, but, how, but what do you I, go? I don't. You don't do that. Mm. And do you go to theaters too? Just to, uh, all the time. Do you have yeah. a criterion? That's, collection? You know, sometimes people go to the synagogue to church. I go to the movies. That's that's that's, beautiful. that's like I even if the movie is bad. Like the ritual of going still. Are you an AMC A list member? Yes. Hell fucking yeah, yes. you are, baby. Dude, that can I tell you? Like, I'm your producer now. Yeah. Look in the camera and say that. Like, I, I don't go to the synagogue. I don't go to the church. I go to the movies, and that's that's like the next season of your of that's SOS the, VHS. Okay, that's uh, SOS DVD. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point though, because it's like the. Th Let the, me go with them. The, oh, yeah. oh yeah, dude. SOS 4K, 4K streaming. Yeah. <laughs> SOS 4K HD 
video. <laughs> exactly. Like that, that got me in the feels though. Yeah. No, but it is true like that. That thing and I I like it both ways too. Like if it's I'm alone in the movies, it's like, oh, this is my personal thing. Yeah. If it's a comedy, I like to, you know, the, you, the well camaraderie, know, yeah. the, you know, or a horror, like having it with other people, experience it with other people is good. Do you know what my movies is like that? Uh, have you been to Cracker Barrel? <laughs> yes. Christ. Jesus Dude. Christ. I'm like, cause I that's, didn't grow up in your... Cracker Barrel. I'm from San Diego. We didn't have Chick-fil-A Cracker Barrel. I go there and like, I went there, I was working in Tampa, Florida, and I, my hotel was next to a Cracker Barrel. You got and I, was, I went there every day for breakfast. Southern lunch. experience oh, and pride. Like, nothing food. like eating around rusty farm equipment. It's, <laughs> yeah. Buddy, like, uh, like, what got me to is like, oh, you know what I try to do? I saw, this is film related. I saw Shia LaBeouf one time at Tender Greens. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a you, book. More, more than the movies, you like the restaurant next to the theater. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, Burbank, is that in Burbank? Yeah. Um, I love a good yard house. <laughs> so as long as it's close to Flappers Comedy Club and, right. uh, and the movie theater. So um, I saw Shia LaBeouf at Tender Greens. It was well, Studio City, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to t take away. I didn't want to cut, cut your legs off. Mm -hmm. Is that what you say? Nope. <laughs> I don't want to cut your legs off anyways. But he was at, he was at the restaurant... Cause I've seen John Lovitz at um, John Bur Lovitz Burger Comedy Lounge. Club. I've seen him at John Lovitz Comedy <laughs> Club also. I've seen I've seen Jason Reitman at the counter. I've seen celebrities at restaurants, but they're on their phone by themselves. But they're on their phone, yeah, or text and whatever. Shia LaBeouf at Tender Greens, no book, no phone, just eating. And I, you know what? I went to Cracker Barrel and I did that because I was like, well, what would Shia LaBeouf do here? Experience the, yep. and that, take it all in. It's like you at the movie theater, that's me at Cracker Barrel. Yeah. Do you, have you ever do that? Do you ever sit down at a restaurant by yourself and just not look at anything? I, I have done it as an exercise to see how, how impatient I will get uh, yeah. until I get my phone or something to Could do. Did you do it? And 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 yeah, I, I, I think like someone, I, I forgot who said that it's good to be bored like and understand what boredom is that today it's impossible to have a second without yeah. filling it with something and that that is messing up your brain and I, I kind of believe that but it's hard. My friends are, was a writer on one of these YouTube uh, for a minute YouTube had YouTube read and they were doing like uh, shows for YouTube mm -hmm. whatever, right? and that's a lot of people who worked on uh, tangentially to this stuff and she, my friend wrote, wrote for one of these shows and she said it was very hard because the actors were all YouTube kids from your generation i guess and like uh they like the scene is like you're in an elevator and you're just waiting they don't know how to act they don't know how to they don't know what it's like to it's sit in a, that to be in a party and just night just sit in the corner and be a loser the instinct and i do it now too it's just like Look at your phone. oh i don't know what to do <laughs> so yeah. people think that i'm not a loser and then so i'm doing Absolutely. something it's like a I, shield but they these kids didn't know how to act in an elevator like doopy 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 <laughs> doopy doop you know yeah I agree. Agree. It's, 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 uh, I think that that has changed things a lot. And I mean, Shia LaBeouf is a little crazy, but I also it's a, say, it's a yeah. true artist thing, right? So I, right. I respect that. Yeah, even Stevens, dude. That's an artist. Even Stevens. Even Stevens. I. Uh, um. Are we your best guests ever? Absolutely. That's uh, uh, as the last first. question for my best guest is like. Why should people watch Eraser if they haven't? I think which, it's almost alpha. No, no, uh, oh, 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 and also almost alpha, which nice. is kind of the eraser both for the of, same reasons. The muscles it's, and the it's, laugh. It's almost alpha, the eraser of podcasts. <laughs> I can't tell you. I was my heart was my, it was filling up. My soul was filling up when you start saying, you start saying it is the eraser of podcasts. Then you switched it. Then he started talking. Then you switched it to a question. And okay, my heart uh, it went down a little. Yeah. Okay, I think it is. I don't know if I want to be the eraser podcast. <laughs> That's what I yeah. I frame it as a question. You ask you ask like the average person if they've seen eraser and they're gonna think I'm saying eraser head wrong and then right. I elaborate and then they're gonna think oh no Terminator dude <laughs> yeah, yeah like no 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 this and they're gonna be like oh Commando no 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 I don't want to be that you know what's sad in like ten years there's gonna be a Netflix movie starring Seinfeld about the history of the uh, the, the first eraser. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be called Eraser, and no one's gonna know about this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> mm. But I, I think that why should people watch Eraser? It's classic '90s. It's, uh, it's nostalgia. If you're younger, I guess it's not nostalgia, but it's what it's my childhood dream of what a movie was. When in 1996, I was 10 years old. I went to see it in the theater, not looking at a cell phone. I was like, this is amazing. I walked out unironically. This is the coolest thing. Yeah, ever. I think it's a movie that unapologetically just goes for badass. 
yeah. which I like. Like it's like like Roadhouse goes for badass, and they're like leaning into it, and it's not. They don't know why we're laughing at it. This movie goes for badass, and they don't care that we're laughing at it. I, it's just obnoxiously uh, cool. I agree. Fun. I think it's a good. It's a good. Uh definition of what this type of movie is yeah it is on the cusp of it could be a movie it's not quite there like respect mr schwarzenegger if you're listening or watching but like if it was a little bit more it is campy like maybe just in hindsight i don't know what do you, I, I wonder what you, you have been this. erased but like that but like like the guy with the guy uh, the guy from uh babe uh <laughs> james cromwell when like you you're the reason he takes out his gun like i can't believe you did this you're the reason i'm doing this <laughs> she's herself like it's so drama and like at the end like james coburn like watches uh arnold and uh vanessa williams go off in the sunset and he just cuts to him going <laughs> like it's so like yeah cheese ball That's cheesy yeah cheesy time and all the bad like all but can i tell you like what's i i almost took i almost took pictures to do homework through the slideshow every casting is so on the nose 90s like okay we need italian italian goofy like like this is a pre-sopranos italian guy so it's like they're like yeah. cartoon characters <laughs> yeah like italian mobster we need a, m- a mobster it has to be italian it has to be fat it has yeah. to be eating pizza. Talk about pizza right <laughs> and then like and then like and you need the and then like even like the the, the nerd on the computer like like oh i don't know what the, like it's just everyone and i swear the bad guys look like bad guys right it's i don't a, know what they do in their life otherwise the archetype of uh, everything their face, the structure <laughs> of their face like I prom- that's why you should watch Eraser even if you don't care watch it just for the casting watch of, it like, for the structure of these guys faces it's but it's so weird how do they look like bad guys mm. it's good acting James Conn no their faces <laughs> I'm not talking about James Conn like brilliant right. actor but like the his henchmen who like are not henchmen at the beginning and like and then like and then the guy who's like I don't know and, like, it's just it's great basic not thoughtful casting. Also, they all play bad. The guy with the scar on his face plays a bad guy in like literally a million movies. Million yeah, stunt movies. people who can yeah. fall and jump that look bad, yeah. menacing. I think that's the casting call. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys, for yeah. for coming to the island, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys again. Hopefully, I'll also be back sometime. But we'll 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 let let Doc and and Carlos keep keep going with the show. Yeah. Thanks for having us. I was, yeah, I thank can you talk guys. About, I can talk about movies for right time. my pleasure my pleasure yeah okay well, thanks for having us SOS VHS we get off this island yes um well we'll John now we'll come okay. with a helicopter now <laughs> exactly okay ciao yeah. guys thank ciao. you ciao